we're transforming this old neglected deck and turning it into this beautiful backyard getaway. We'll be taking you through step by step on how we did it in this video series. In the first two videos, we repaired the structure and replaced the decking. In this video, we'll wrap up the series by replacing the railing, staining the deck, and adding some final touches. We're adding additional posts on the side. So instead of having um, 12 foot sections of railing on the side that wasn't very stable, wasn't supported very well, we're actually going to have uh, more six by sixes on the top and I can show you what that looks like. Here you can see we had to add additional blocking underneath of this post in order to get this attached properly. So we ended up notching the bottom of the post out uh, so it could sit on that joist and we attached it with three different uh, carriage bolts and uh, nuts and washers. The other thing too since we're using new pressure treated lumber instead of the older CCA style lumber, we had to make sure we got hardware that is not going to corrode um, with it being in that wood. So we ended up getting uh, coated deck plus uh, screws and bolts in order to hold and tie everything together. To make everything match, we also had to cut off the post caps from the original posts that were carved into the wood. We used a combination of a circular saw to start the cuts and a reciprocating saw to finish them off. The old rails had extensive dry rot damage, so they needed to be replaced. The balusters, however, are made out of aluminum, so they could be salvaged and reused. We decided to give the balusters a fresh look with some enamel spray paint first. We're going to reuse the balusters from the old handrails, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and spray painted uh, some new enamel paint just to get a nicer finish on these balusters. We're going to have to spread these rails apart to be able to remove the poles uh, in order to access the screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a quick clamp and we're just going to reverse it. Instead of a clamping motion, we're going to make it a spreader. Do it on the other side, but you probably should have a helper if you're going to do the same thing. So, as you can see, once you remove the entire baluster underneath the balusters, there's a stainless steel screw and a plastic bushing. So, um, once you get all the balusters off, you can remove these, and then you can use your old board as a template for your new board. Um, so that way you can uh, know the exact spacing instead of having to measure and cut and I'll show you what that looks like here coming up. We're choosing to use a rail bracket kit to reinstall the rails and what that's going to let us do is not only make it dressed up a little bit more by having this uh, bracket in place, but it's also going to allow us to put the screw holes in a little bit different position since we had that dry rot issue with the post. So this is going to move the screws out of position just a little bit, make sure that we're attaching these to some solid wood and uh, dress it up a little bit. But in order to do that, what you have to do is once you take that full measurement of the rail, you have to subtract on these uh, a half an inch total so that way it allows for this plastic uh, spacer to be in between. Um, if you don't go with a specific brand, this is from a company called Decorators, um, then you'll just have to check the measurements for yours and make sure you subtract that when you cut your rails. Otherwise, you're gonna have rails that are just a little bit too long uh, to go in the space. So just keep that in mind. We ended up using cedar for the railing instead of pressure treated wood. While the cedar was a little bit more expensive, we were able to pick out straight boards that were dry so we wouldn't have to worry as much about them warping.
Because of some minor differences, it was important for us to get the lengths of the rail boards right. We attached the new brackets to the boards and dry fitted them first to make sure the lengths were correct. That way, if we cut a board wrong, we could correct it right away before doing the rest of the steps. Once we sanded the wood, we used the old rails, a square, and a clamp to mark the spacings to install the balusters. Once the spacing was marked, we eyeballed the center of the line and marked the exact location using the baluster screws. To speed up this process, we switched from using the old baluster screws to a scratch awl in order to mark the locations. We wanted to paint the railing before installing the balusters, so we decided to stain them before assembly. This way we were sure all of the wood was protected and we wouldn't have to worry about getting stain on the balusters that we had just painted. Assembling the rails with the balusters was a tedious process. We found that standing the railing up and starting at one end was the best process for us. If you know of a better way to do this, please leave us a comment below with your tip. Once we had our first section assembled and in place, we wanted to speed up this process. To do that, we made a map of our railing sections, numbered the sections, and marked the ends of the railing boards with a sharpie to keep track of where they would be installed. The number told us the section, and we used the letters U and L to indicate the upper and the lower rail boards. For the top rails, we also used cedar, and we marked the length of the cedar boards in place, and then made the final cuts on the miter saw. For the top rail boards, we used 5 8 inch cedar decking instead of a 2x6 because we wanted to give the overall railing look a little bit lower profile than it would have been with a normal 2x6. To attach the top rail, we decided to use deck screws and just went straight through the top. We could have used a different method to hide the screws, but since we were using a solid stain anyway, this was the fastest method. To prepare the existing wood that we're not going to be replacing, we've gone ahead and pressure washed it to knock loose all the paint that was flaking loose. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to come back, since this is dry, we're going to come back with an orbital sander and just kind of knock down any of the um, wood fibers that you see that's kind of sticking out of the wood. Sometimes when you do pressure wash, um, especially if you're getting underneath the paint and into the wood, the water pressure itself will cause some of the wood to splinter or to kind of turn fibrous. So we're gonna use an orbital sander to kind of knock that down first before we coat it with a new coat of paint. Some of the pressure treated wood that we use for the deck boards had some rough spots. So to make the surface a little bit smoother, we decided to use a sander and some 120 grit sandpaper first to smooth out these sections and give the overall deck boards a nice smooth finish that was easy to walk on. For the deck stain, we decided to go with Valspar Solid Stain tinted to the silver mine color. By using a solid stain, we were able to make all the different wood types match and hide all the existing minor defects. To dress up the deck, we chose to go with some solar-powered post caps that we found on Amazon. 
We're not going to use the included hardware that came with these post caps. We're going to just use regular deck screws to attach these. For the furniture, we fell in love with the Chesterbrook patio set from Lowe's. And to finish the look, we found an outdoor rug online that ties everything together. We hope you enjoyed this series on rebuilding our deck. Be sure to check out parts one and two if you haven't already. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. At Top Homeowner, our goal is to help you become the top homeowner in your neighborhood. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one.